What up, everybody? Thank you once again for checking out the channel. Uh, it is 5.30 on Monday afternoon, and as of right now, we are still on Tyler Barron watch. He has not committed. Uh, whether or not he will commit is still <laughs> kind of up in the air. Uh, so we're seeing if that's gonna, you know, that's gonna happen in the next day or two or week or whatever. I don't know. We were all kind of expecting it by now, uh, cause coach Dennis Smith did post something on Twitter, kind of not a bat signal, but kind of hinting, you know, and, uh, earlier today, I think coach, uh, pop Cooney might've posted something on Twitter um, again, not a bad signal or anything, but whenever they post anything positive, uh, you know, it gets the fans going, it gets the fans talking, like something might be coming, some good news might be dropping. Um, but regardless, we still sit here, uh, Monday afternoon, Tyler Barron less, uh, but assuming he doesn't commit, assuming we don't go add any other transfers, which I don't think is going to happen. I think we do add some, you know, a couple of transfers just to fill those scholarship spots at the very least. But say we don't say hypothetically, we go into the season as is the roster, the way it is right now. Where are we at? Do we like where we're at? Do we like this roster? And personally, I'm going to say yes, because I thought at first that, yeah, at slot corner, at safety, I would like to add another veteran. And I still would. You know, it's more of a luxury thing at this point. I don't think it's anything that's a dire need. Edge rusher, same thing, because you like to be four deep. And by that, I mean two guys at each defensive end spot uh, that's that are proven and, re you know, proven veterans, reliable, somebody you know you can count on. But I look at the roster and, you know, no roster is perfect. I don't think that exists. And I look at our defense and I'm like, man, the more I look at it, the more confident I feel. Of course, this all is factoring in health and all those things. Um, but I'm looking at, let's start with the edge position. Let's start defensive end. Right now, I'm looking at it as is. And of course, you got Ruben Bain, who might be one of the best edge rushers in the country in 2024. He may be an All-American. Let's see what happens. But I think he's set to have a monster season. And then you got Elijah Alston, who you picked up as a transfer from Marshall. Um you got Akeem Mesador, who should be coming back from his injury fully healthy this season. Can't wait to see him. That right there is a three-man rotation that I think a lot of teams would envy. Of course, Mesador, bit of a question mark, sure. But he has had all this time to heal. All signs point to him being ready for the season. Uh, I know there was a situation with him having to get a special type of shoe you know, fitted to his foot because he was having foot issues. But... You know, I'm pretty confident that he will at least get on the field. Will he stay healthy? That's the question. So three guys that you can definitely rely on. And then you got a fourth, bit of a wild card. Uh, Malik Bryant, the converted linebacker, now an edge rusher, going to play a lot of that jack position. And from what I'm hearing, he's adapting well. So you've got four guys, three guys with a ton of experience, one extra guy who's a sophomore. He's been in the system. Very athletic. Um, I feel I look at that on paper, and you know what? I feel okay. That's not too bad. Because right after that, you got some talented young guys. You got three. You got Cole McConathy. You got Pickett, and you got Lightfoot. Pickett and Lightfoot, you know, they got to add a little bit of size. But I think even them, they're gonna they'll make some noise. They're too skilled to not go in there and do something. Uh, and I know Lightfoot has already been adding weight, so he's doing a good job there. But Cole McConathy physically already looks the part. He already did some good things in spring, so I expect him to have a role on this defense. Uh, of those three guys, at least one, you would think, just probability, at least one is going to be in that rotation and is going to do good things for us. And then he got slot corner. I mean, well, I'll go. my concern is more safety, to be honest with you, because field and boundary corner – I think we got the best tandem in the conference, one of the best in the ACC with Damari and Daryl Porter. And then after that, you got Jadis Richard, who can rotate in. He's nice. He's reliable. Uh, and then um, you got this kid, Hill, the, the transfer, also from Marshall. Very, very good. I think that was perfect. To add that fourth guy for depth and who can push for starting snaps, perhaps, 
I, I think I think that was a really good add. Safety though, you got Jaden Harris, who I like. I think it's it's his time now. I think he's going to have a really solid season. He's added some size. He's really fast, athletic. Um, I'm not saying he's going to be Cam Kinchins, but I think he's going to be a real solid, reliable safety for us. He's going to prevent big plays. He's going to come up and make a lot of tackles. Um, he, he's going to be really good. Markeith Williams, his lack of size does scare me a bit. It makes me nervous. But he's been in the system now, what, three, four years? I want to say three years. So he's a guy that I think could step in. And just because of his experience alone, um, he's not going to blow assignments. He's going to come in there and at least be reliable. Hopefully he can improve on the tackling. And, you know, that's that that's a good piece there, I think. But again, the lack of size, he's got to make up for that somehow. Mish Powell, one of the best pickups in the portal, will also be very reliable. I think he's going to be a playmaker. He might have to pull a little double duty playing slot corner and safety, but that's one of the reasons we got him. He is providing a lot of veteran leadership already, some vocal leadership, which I like. And then after that, you got Zaquan Patterson. Now, you're not going to rely on him to start or anything, but if you need a safety, normally if you need – um, sorry, a freshman. If you need a true freshman to come in and play 15, 17, 20 snaps in a game, usually that's not a good sign. That's usually signifying a lack of depth, uh, kind of showing where you are program-wise. But there are certain situations. Look at Caleb Downs last year, right? Zaquan Patterson is a different kind of safety, is a different kind of freshman. Um, physically looks the part already. He looks like he's been in the program three years. Um, you look at him. He, he he looks like a junior already. Um, the mental part, you know, it, that's that's the only thing he's got to get down right now because it is a very uh, – Lance Gidry's defense is very tough to learn, especially for DBs. But if you're telling me he's got to step in and play 15 to 20 snaps a game, I feel okay because he's, he's on that top end of the class, you know, those four borderline five-star guys that if they got to come in and play a lot, you know what, I'm I'm kind of okay with that. I think they're going to be fine. And another position that did give me some concern when I look at it, depth-wise, not the starting five, I think we're solid there, is the offensive line. You'd want a rotation, ideally, of at least seven guys that you can rely on. You got your five. So who are going to be those next two? Well, could be one of a few guys. It could be Pancake. could be Markel Bell, who's six foot nine, six foot eight, freak of nature, 300 40, 350 pounds, whatever he is. Tommy Kinsler, six foot six, 300 some odd pounds. I think he's like 330, 340. Uh, and agile. It's pretty crazy to watch him, watch him on the O line. And uh, and then you got Ryan Rodriguez, who's, you know, he's been with the program a few years. He got into that temple game, played really well. He played in the bowl game. He has experience now. Of those four guys, I would have to believe that. Coach Mirabal and Coach Cristobal will get two out of those four at least to a point where they are serviceable. What do I mean by that? Serviceable means you can come into a game because a guy's nicked up and play a half or, hell, even play an entire game, and you're not going to get obliterated too much. Or maybe they can scheme it in a way where you're not lined up against their best guy or you're not on an island, you're getting some double team help on your end. You know, they'll, they'll scheme it in a way that they're helping you out. Or maybe they're not running the play right behind you. They're running it to the other side. So there's ways around that. So I look at that. And of course, assuming health, assuming we have good injury luck, uh, which we haven't had the last couple of years. I look at that and I think this roster, this roster's solid. I'm, I'm, I'm really having a hard time finding holes in, in this roster. Because aside from the three positions I just mentioned, linebacker, I think we're pretty stacked as far as numbers. You got Chase, you got Popo, who got valuable experience in the in the spring. You got Kiko, who's your starter. Um, Cam Pruitt, who had a great spring. He's going to play a lot as a freshman. Alderman, another veteran piece that can come in and play right away. Uh, you had Wes, who had a fantastic spring. You have... Lots of numbers at linebacker. D tackle, pretty stacked as well. CJ, Cook, Barrow, Moten. Then you got Justin Scott and Artavius Jones coming in. 
feel really good about that position. And, you know, I, I just, I look at this defense top to bottom and I have a really hard time finding any huge holes in years past. It wasn't that hard to find for, for many years, linebacker in general was a massive hole. Um, no offense to Corey flag, but you know, Corey flag for a while was our best linebacker. You know, those, those days are behind us. Now you have fast athletic guys that can get downhill, that can cover sideline to sideline. Um, something we haven't had in a very long time. So don't get me wrong. I am still crossing my fingers, holding, holding out hope for Tyler Barron that he commits because he instantly makes your defense better. An already solid defense, I think he instantly makes them better because he was one of the best edge rushers in the SEC last year. The competition there speaks for itself. And he would be very likely starting opposite Reuben Bain. Can you imagine a starting D-line of Tyler Barron, Reuben Bain, C.J. Clark, and Simeon Barrow? Those are four NFL guys right there. That is a defensive line that I think rivals most defensive lines in the entire country. In fact, I think you would have a hard time finding a better front four, starting front four. In, you would have a hard time finding five better ones, I would say. If you disagree, tell me in the comments. But I, I think you would have a hard time finding them. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. Um Hopefully we get some good news soon on that front, but you know, whether or not the good news comes, I think, I think this roster is pretty solid. I think it's pretty set and I'm excited. It's May 20th, just a few short months away from that opening kickoff against Florida.